Hi guys and welcome to another episode of The Table. Today I've got with me, I'm Antonia Howard, I'm a news anchor and a journalist. And I've got, I'm Surya Greenwood, I am an auditor. Okay, so today's topic is going to be on being a working woman in Sierra Leone because we get so many questions about, you know, you guys want to come back, you know, different career fields, what can we do? Um, so we've got two people who actually work and live in Sierra Leone to tell you what the experience is like. So we're going to start with you, Antonia. How long have you been in your role, in your um, career? Um, I would say about three years because I started off as an intern. Okay. Um, it was part of my um, program in college. So I started off um, with five months internship and then it carried on. So yeah, okay. about three years. Three years. Yeah. And yourself since A year okay. since I started because yeah. I did a three month internship last year. Okay. So what led you into your respective roles? Like what led you down this career path? Um, okay, mine is sort of a, I would say a strange story. Yeah. Um, so I really didn't plan on doing journalism at the start um, it's just that you know I wanted I really wanted to go to college in Sierra Leone I didn't want to leave because um, I was just too attached to my mother that's a, that's, a, that's a whole different story so I wanted to do something that wouldn't limit what I do here in Sierra Leone so I found that mass communications was just that course that would provide um, an open an open career you can you can try your hands at many different things yeah. and the other side of the story is that my grandmother was actually a journalist she was wow. a, she was a broadcaster okay. so it all just happened fit, that fit way. Yeah. she yeah. said she didn't want to do um, go out of the country yeah. because she was attached to her mother i think it's the opposite for me my parents were <laughs> too attached to me <laughs> so i couldn't leave <laughs> so i couldn't leave yeah but like her, I it was never my plan to go into the finance stream, like okay. to go into business. Yeah. I'd always had a passion for the arts and performing okay. arts and all of that. But yeah. we don't have a school for that in Sierra Leone. I found the next thing I was good at. Yeah. So it happened to be finance. finance. And the only school for that is IPAM, which is our business school in Sierra Leone. So that's okay. where I went and then things just moved on from there. Okay. So so do you want to explain a bit more about your role? Because some people might not understand what it exactly is that you do. So do you want to explain a bit more about your role? Okay, so as an auditor, what we do is, let's say you have a company and you can hire an auditor from between six months to one year, it's up to you. But let's say you have a company and you're not too sure about the financials of your company and you want to make sure you're on the right track and you want to make sure everything is in place. What you do is you hire us, auditors, we go there, we ask for all of your books, your financial records, your transactions, everything, we go through it, okay. we make sure that you're on the right, right cause, we tell you what we discover, what we find, we discuss with you and then we just let you be. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's just like a road, it's like a contract type of thing? Yes, like okay. you have companies who hire us yeah. for... Like at the end of every year, we go to their company, we ask for their records, we go okay. through everything, we make sure everything is okay, okay. Yeah. and that's basically it. Okay. Um, and yourself? Yes, um, it's a bit, um, it's quite simple but also a bit complicated when it comes to um, journalism because yeah. there are so many fields. You can be a presenter, you can be a reporter, you can be the camera guy. So <laughs> there are so many fields in broadcasting yeah. or journalism. So it, it goes from um, being on screen and off screen. Yeah. So what I do is I do the news. I read the news on um, AYB television. I also um, present the um, Wake Up Surreal program that's in the morning, 8 to 10. And then off screen, um, I, I walk in the newsroom. I edit scripts, reports. Um, you know, right. stories and you know, just all the so you kind of do a little bit of everything basically. Yes. That's yes. good. So you both did an internship here in Sierra Leone and what was that experience like? Um, was it enjoyable? Was it stressful? For me, yeah. Since you're an intern, they start you off with the easy things. Like you think, Oh, this is cool, yeah, I can do this. Like you know, yeah. you're just doing the basic thing. Yeah. But then when you're hired they're like, mm, we got you <laughs> 
then the real work right, starts. Right, then the real work starts. Yeah. So as an intern, I wasn't given much responsibility. Okay. I was given some responsibility yeah. for my level. Yeah. And I found it quite, it was challenging because yeah. even then I had no idea what I was going into. Yeah. So at that level, it was still challenging for me. Yeah. So yeah, I became a better auditor okay. slash accountant okay. slash mm. finance person. Finance finance person. person. <laughs> <laughs> so what was it like for you? Right. Um, as an intern, what you usually do in when it comes to journalism is like you do all the dirty work. Mm. That's so what they have interns. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So almost um, on a daily basis, I would do like two stories. You'd be out in the streets, yeah. and you know, in Sierra Leone, people are so shy; they do not want to speak to the camera. So you spend a whole day to do a story that is going to air for two minutes, <laughs> and then you ask people their opinions on stuff, and yeah. they don't want to speak. Or sometimes when the camera is off, they can they can tell you all the story their whole life, and then you say. Okay, so can you repeat okay, that? Can you, and then they go like, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. So as an intern, um, you know the the field of broadcasting or journalism is quite competitive. Okay. So um, when you start off, you meet you meet people who are already established, and it's sort of a threat to them to okay. see this young person mm -hmm. coming up, and so. They tend to shy away from putting you on the screen at first, um, just so you you just do the the dirty work. That, that that's basically it. So yeah, but it was a it was a good experience. Yeah. I had a lot of people around me who were experienced, yeah. who were experts in the field, and so I learned a lot from them. And at the time, um, AYV Television had just opened. So I think it was about six months or so gone into um, airing, and so um, they were looking for young people because that's basically the um, mission or vision of AYB to you know just bring young people in and give them a chance to be leaders okay. in their own um, fields. For people yeah. who don't know what AYB means, what is it stand for? Um, AYB is African Young Voices. That's basically what it means. Yes. So there's a television, there's a newspaper, and then there's a radio. And there's a printing press as well. Nice, nice. So moving on from that, you mentioned about um, you were going to go down the creative path in life, but there wasn't that kind of um, opportunity for you to go down that path. Why do you think that is in Sierra Leone? Is creativity not you know, something that is supported here? Um, I think times are changing. Okay. Back then, I'm saying back then, like <laughs> this was like it was like, you know, in <laughs> 1950s something. <laughs> But about 10 years ago, yeah. when I was going into university, was leaving high school and going to university, yeah. it wasn't 10 years ago. <laughs> I sound so old now. Like yeah. secondary school, yeah. you know, you try mm -hmm. to figure out what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, when you're in um, mid-secondary school, probably. <laughs> You have to decide whether you're going to the arts or the commercial yeah, stream yeah. or the science mm. stream. So that's where it all began. Mm. We did go to school together. Um, actually, from primary school. Yeah. Oh, wow. yes. oh. <laughs> mm. So girls. that's how I knew that. Yeah. Okay. Um, in high school, I knew there was no place for me to go mm. if I chose arts, and I wasn't going to choose arts for anything other than performing arts. Yeah. But then there was no school, there was no market, there was nothing encouraging young people who wanted to go into movies, who wanted to go into the entertainment industry yeah. in a whole. Yeah. So, you know, my parents advised me and as a young kid I saw that it was best to do something, have a second option, have a fallback plan. Yeah. So this is what finance was to me, it was like a fallback option, but now it's like the it's only life. option <laughs> it's, it's my life. life yeah so if you had any advice for anybody who was coming in that was coming with that creative mentality because you know creativity is now something that's everybody's like uh -huh. into it what advice like would you give them or what would you like to see in the creative in industry okay so i mentioned that um it has picked up like decade like times are moving times are changing now yeah and i feel like now mm -hmm. you have more people expressing their creativity you have yes. more people doing arts and poems and writing books and yeah. it's good yeah and so if someone is coming in and wants to follow that path i say go for it you mm. never know how it may pick up i mean there's somebody i know i'm not going to name names but there's somebody <laughs> i know who was in the same industry as i was okay. but because he had a passion like he wanted to see this 
like himself grow in that industry yeah. so he left the country because he knew that was the only way he could do it yeah. and now he's like up there and I'm like <laughs> do you, that could do be you, me <laughs> do, you, do you think that's a thing though like people are going out yeah. to go and find opportunities that possibly could be grown here like do you yes. think that's an issue yeah. here that, that is really an issue I mean when you look at the migration problems uh -huh. all across the world it's about finding better opportunities yeah. Yeah. and for young people in Sierra Leone I feel like even before they even give it a try they're mm -hmm. already they already have a preconception that it would not work yeah. because they have not seen people who have succeeded here. yeah yeah so it. it's it's already um, in the back yeah. of their mind that yeah. you know it's, it's better for me work. to do it outside of Sierra Leone yeah. okay and moving on from that do you not regret but do you you know think that staying here was a better option for you in terms of your career path like do you think if you'd gone out and come back in or if you'd gone out you'd be somewhere else you know you'd be, big, you'd be this big star you'd, know, you'd be this <laughs> massive financial so. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I honestly do not know what would have happened if I had left the country. Yeah. Sure. But I don't regret staying because I feel like I have grown in my career. I have grown a lot since okay. like two years ago, for yeah. example. Mm -hmm. So I don't regret leaving at all. all right. For me, I think um, Sierra Leone has a smaller market. Yeah. And so it's, it's easier to sell your stock. People yes. just don't know it. Yeah. And so I... I'm sure if I were out of Sierra Leone, I would not be as... Lost in the sauce. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure I would not be at the, the stage or the level at which I am now. Um, I, I'm, I'm certain I would have learned a lot yeah. more, uh -huh. but I'm not sure um, I would have had the chance to... Um, Shine, your brand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Shine, yeah. shine yeah. my brand yeah. or whatever it is because Sierra Leone has a, a smaller market and so um, you find that a lot of a lot of the small people or the, the small population is paying attention yeah. Yeah. and um, especially for media or in the entertainment industry there's a very small market for it here yeah. and so every little thing grabs attention yeah, yeah. that's, that's true. true okay so as a young career woman where do you both see yourself in five years time see your world bank yes <laughs> speaking <laughs> into existence <laughs> yeah. no i like that <laughs> You know, um, in five years, I don't know how Tiffany feels like in five years from now, I yeah. would have moved on from auditing. Um, okay. I've always had this passion or this desire to start up my own private company. Knowing now that, knowing now the issues that most companies face when it comes to that their financials and keeping good account of their records, like there's there's a part of me that wants to start up my own company mm -hmm. that is specialized in helping smaller companies i'll be a small company so i don't know what i'm talking about <laughs> but helping other companies yeah. like, like <laughs> grow basically grow. yeah okay and just that grow. Grow. um it's quite difficult for me to say uh, where but um i don't i don't really have a plan of leaving sorry anytime soon yeah so I would probably be bigger and better here in Sierra Leone or probably doing something elsewhere in one of those big maybe BBC or CNN. Yes. Or yes. yes. Are you listening? <laughs> BBC. <laughs> World Bank. World Bank. <laughs> <laughs> so if you were to venture out into your own, you know, business, so you started your own broadcasting network, your own um, auditing financial, financial company, yeah. um, what challenges do you think you face? <laughs> starting <laughs> like honestly like right. no joke in starting as a woman as a young woman <laughs> so that, that would be there's a been big, a woman and there's yeah. been a young woman got it <laughs> i mean even not starting just walking somewhere right. as a woman uh -huh. as a young woman has its yes. own challenges, challenges. Mm. They're so expand. We want to know. We want to tell so people. I had this story that I and I knew I was going to get to tell. Tell us. <laughs> so we were auditing this company, yeah. and this was our second time going there. Yeah. And then there was this man in the company that we didn't really have any business with. Like okay. he was in a different department. Because yeah. when we go to companies, we deal with the finance and accounting department. So he was in a different department. But then he came to our office where we were. 
Then he was like, I was alone in the office at the time. Okay. I was the only female in the office at the time. Gotcha. So he came in, he was like, Hi, Nami name, I speak Korean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nami name, so, 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 and so. I don't just see you around. You look really good. You look so young. I want to take you out to dinner. Wow. <laughs> Mm. So wow. I was, I was there like, thank you, <laughs> thank you, no, <laughs> no, and then he was like, oh no, not to me one, the boss self go there, like, what? <laughs> Wait, it was just okay. me, you and the boss, like okay. no, uh -uh. and it's not work related, not work related at all. Okay, interesting. So, mm. I mean, when you, especially mm. when you, when you work in media, mm -hmm. people just think you know this is not a woman mm. basically just being a woman is an appetizer <laughs> basically not in a good way <laughs> no not, not in a good way definitely not in a good way i mean for 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 people who work in media for a journalist especially your contacts are your you know your those are your strong resources yeah, yeah. And so when people take that for granted, I mean, it's so frustrating not being able to give out your number as a journalist yeah. Yeah. because you're a woman. You, yeah. you obviously think people are going to just take, take advantage, advantage of that. Mm. Call you, text you 24 seven. Mm. Hi, baby. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's, it's just so frustrating to work mm. under such conditions. Mm -hmm. You walk in an office. The men think they can just hold you anyhow, mm -hmm. touch you anyhow. You know, it's, yeah. it's just, there's just just so many challenges just yeah. being a woman in any industry. Any industry. Yeah. 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 So, what do you but, think we can do, like you know, as upcoming you know young people, to change that kind of stigma in the workplace? Because I'm sure it's not just here. I'm sure it happens yeah. everywhere, but. I feel like it might be slightly a little bit, <laughs> just a tiny bit worse here, like, you know, because I understand what you guys uh -huh. are talking about. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you think we can do? Like, is there anything we can do to change that stigma, change, change that? Outlook? Um, I don't know. I guess you just have to, you just have to keep <laughs> um, focused. I would, you know, I would, I would um, talk about two things. First, I think women need to understand that it's not okay. okay exactly it is definitely not okay yeah. um don't think because this person is your boss yeah um he has certain rights or privileges no it is never okay yeah. no matter the condition or hierarchy in which yeah. the person is you know getting at you yeah. it is never okay and then second i think you know Men also need to understand that it is not okay. Two sexes just need to understand that it is not okay. It's not okay. If you're okay. watching this, it's never okay. It's not okay. Never okay. <laughs> okay. No, it's true. It's, you like you guys have a, like a good point. So people like obviously working in this kind of environment, people just tend to think if they hear a female is coming, they're just like, oh, you know, you can pull a yeah. fast one. You know, if yeah. I call her, you can come, go do this. Um, so, you know, let's change that. Let's, women can be career women as well as men, and we can be taken seriously in the workplace as well as men. So, yeah, that got deep, guys. <laughs> I felt the passion there. That got really, yeah. <laughs> that got really deep.